Some years ago, when I decided to build a garden room, I thought to myself, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna to wanna to future-proof it. And one of the design ideas I had was to build a small indoor pool which would meet building regs and would be fairly low cost to run. It wasn't that low cost to build, admittedly, it's a proper concrete pool shell on piles as well, which go down about eight meters because we're in clay and we've got a lot of trees. So there was a lot of consideration structurally to take into account. But what I did do is I used the pool shell and the piles as the external foundations and I built the pool from edge to edge, if you like, just like a lot of pools you see in basements, okay? So the pool is quite small. It's six meters long by four meters wide. And the reason I did that is because A, I wanted to keep the heating cost down. The more water you've got, the more it costs to heat. And to make it really worthwhile to swim against, we put in a swim machine, okay? It's quite expensive. It's a remote control swim machine that gives you variable speed current for different sort of swimmers, if you like. Now, that was quite expensive, but it was a lot less than building another two or three meters on the pool, especially in energy costs as well. Now, the building itself is really well insulated over and beyond what it would need to be to meet regs. It wasn't a lot more money, but the energy savings that this is gonna provide is amazing. So we've got a very simple setup. We have two floor drains right in the bottom of the pool and we have a pair of skimmers on this side of the pool as well. We've got two returns which send the water in which goes through the filtration system, through the heat pump and brings it back into the pool. We have got a dehumidification system here uh, it's called a CDP50T, which means through the wall, and that does all of the dehumidification and also the air heating should we need it. Now, we've not needed to use the air heating because the room is so well insulated that in the, uh, well, the pool is evaporating all the time. The heat from the pool is coming up into the room. It's contained in the room, and it's always about a degree or more warmer in the room than the actual pool water. The pool water we keep at 30 degrees and the room is around about 31, 32, which was a surprise to me, the fact that we didn't need to heat the room. The condensation doesn't occur because of the dehumidification process. There, um, it, it obviously catches all the moisture. It also has heat recovery in it, so it sends that warm air back into the room. But to use one of those, you also need to introduce fresh air, so we've got a small Ventaxia fan, which is really low energy, which is on 24 hours a day. It's a variable speed fan, and we've just kind of found a sweet spot for it in right in the middle between lowest and highest, and that seems to work wonders as well. That's also got heat recovery in as well, so everything it pulls out warm, it sends back some of that warmth with the clean, fresh air that comes in. So we've also got a chemical automatic chemical dosing system because one thing I feared about building a pool was the maintenance, the upkeep, learning all about it and also the pool chemistry because if you get the chemistry in the water wrong it can affect all your finishes, it can affect metal work, it can even affect things you know in, in the room where the evaporation can cause the chlorine if you like to affect it. So I've got a automatic dosing system which has got two um, measurement, it measures the water, so it measures the pH, it also measures the chlorine levels, if you like, okay? And they recommend to run a pool at about one and a half parts per million. I'm running this at one part per million, and I find it's absolutely perfect for us because it's not um, used, it's not outdoors, so we don't get all of the leaves or anything coming in it, we don't get any debris in it at all. We're using a really good pump and filter which has got glass media, okay? The best kind of glass media you can get. And what that means is it just literally cleans the water even better. A lot of swimming pool people will tell you the exact benefits. But um, it means I only have to backwash this pool once every eight weeks or so. And I do it purely because I want to, okay? The, on the um, pump, there's a valve which shows the pressure of the water going through the system. And you set that when you do the backwash and when that needle comes up, so when that filter starts getting clogged, that raises up to a point where it says, now you need to backwash. And mine never ever leaves that mark, okay? So that's how we do the filtration. 
The water is always crystal clear. We use a flocculant as well, which we just put into the strainer basket of the pump, but we've got a flocculant machine that we're gonna put in as well, which will automatically dose the flocculant, okay? So, so far, it's been really, really easy to use. The heat pump is also fairly efficient. It's a 19 kilowatt heat pump, and it's also um, what they call an inverter heat pump. So what that means is, that it can sort of train itself to use the right amount of energy to keep the water at the optimum temperature. So not too much energy or not too little. It's just, it, it's learned, it's like it's learned its behavior. Now at the moment, it's about 10 or 11 degrees outside. It's early spring and the heat pump generally comes on for about two or three hours a day. That's all it needs just to tick the water temperature over. The water loses about half a degree overnight. That's all on average. In the summer it doesn't lose anything. So this has been running since uh, June, which is around about nearly, nearly coming up 10 months from the time of this video was shot. So this is the plant room. It's on the back. It's all insulated as well. So um, that was really important to me to conserve the energy in the plant room as well because everything gets warm in here and if it's uninsulated the chances are, you know, that, that energy will leak as well. So you, the more heat you keep in your system, the better. Pump, we've got the filter. This is the dehumidification unit. And over here, we've got the dozing unit, which is a really cool bit of kit. And then of course, all of the shutoffs for the bottom drains, the skimmers. This is for our vac points. We've got a vac point as well, so you can vacuum the pull out. Um, isolation for the actual pump here. There's the strainer basket and it's uh, really simple and I've learned so much about swimming pools in the last few years since embarking on this project for myself. All of the research that I did about what I should use, the materials I should use, the, um, the pumps, the filters, the heat pumps, the dosing machines um, was all done in conjunction with a firm who supplied me nearly all of my stuff and it was really, really worthwhile finding a supplier who A, was really interested and B, had a wealth of knowledge to be able to cherry pick the right products based on my pool hall, if you like. And that's been really helpful. And I will put a link in the description of this video to that firm, I'd speak to them. If you're ever thinking about doing a pool, indoor or outdoor, or um, you're working on a pool, you want to upgrade something as well and they're very, very helpful. And where I've had issues, for example, I had an issue with the heat pump, they were able to log into it remotely, have a look at it, change a few settings, and they decided that there was a fault with it, but in, there was no messing around, and they swapped the unit over. They, they sent an engineer, he took the unit away and put a new unit in, um, and it was a really, really good service. Not only that, all of that process of having faults, if you like, and me asking them questions through their technical department, is all in a system. So I can respond, leave it go away like email, but it's all in a customer sort of customer relationship management system. And for a customer, for me, I just didn't realize how valuable that would be. Um, so yeah, totally recommend finding the right supplier for all of your bits and pieces and the right contractors, okay? I had the right people all the way through this job. I found the right piping guy. I found the right, I've got the right plumber, of course. And I think it's absolutely crucial that you really, really make sure you put the best stuff in that you can sort of afford if you like, okay? So that's it. I'm super happy I've done it. It's a brilliant addition to our family lives. It's great for fitness. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all again soon.